So hi everybody, I'm Patrick Bolger, Hornbill's Chief Evangelist, and a few weeks back we went to the IT Service Management Conference and I got talking with Adam Harelock, who's the Service Delivery Manager at ABDC, and we're fortunate enough to have Mary Von Hassel, who's the IT Strategy Manager for right. ABDC, and also Andrew Grant, who's the CEO. Mary Vaughan, I want to ask you, because uh, when I attended this conference with Adam, we were chatting and we were talking about uh, some of the kind of cool stuff that you guys are beginning mm -hmm. to do. So you were previously a uh, computer services manager was, and yeah. then now you're IT strategy manager. Mm -hmm. So what happened with that shift and how did you get involved with the digital program? Okay, um, so I joined um, about four years ago. As you say, I was computer services manager. Yeah. So very much an operational role, keeping the lights on with the IT and looking after the day-to-day -day piece. Um, and then about two years ago, we launched a digital transformation program to basically look at what we want to do for our customer and put our, our processes online so that our customers can kind of engage with us all of the time, whenever they want to suit them. Um, so I got involved in that project. Um, that's, that's in full flight now. So we've been delivering things through my account and we're putting more and more into that all of the time. Um, on the back of that then, um, I was giving you the opportunity to look at the IT strategy. So I've been, for the last six months, looking at the IT strategy, looking at what we're going to do next um, in terms of both how we engage with our customers and also how we engage with our staff to, to kind of almost give that next level of transformation, really. The first level was really to massively reduce our infrastructure in terms of serving the customer. I mean, this is almost before we mm -hmm. had matured our view of the customer as someone who's a paying guest that needs to if we can provide them new value propositions that it might pay us for things that we've yeah. never supplied them to then use that profit to pay down the minimum costs of running a statutory service. And so we went cloud in 2010, which mm -hmm. was the first council to go with Amazon Web Services and go fully cloud, which we then, that helped us reduce the kind of people infrastructure internally, but we didn't take that off the table. We used that resource to project manage the changes that were going across the piece. Five years later, as we've done cloud and as many Council's only just starting the cloud, software as a service, picking and choosing, lighter touch. We're now looking at the digital platform to enable us to satisfy and fulfill customers more, okay. which Maribon can say what, what is in that strategy. But to me, it's actually just digital is a, is a word that I think the industry uses. But to me, it's about um, bespoking a personal service in whatever it is. So when we're on our tablets and phones, it's not the medium. It is I, w I can tailor what I want to do now in my time, in my place, through the digital means, obviously, through web browsers, whatever. But I can, I can pick and choose the things I want in my day myself. I'm on the train. I check whether the fridge has got any milk. And I'm arranging the babysitter because I'm actually personalizing my experience of the day. That's what digital sure. means to me. It's not about the kit, although clearly that's quite exciting. And, and absolutely, and I think for me, for the council, it's about making sure we're, we're in there with that. Yeah. So right. people expect to be able to do all of those things. Yeah. And actually, they expect to be able to deal with the council in that yeah. way as well. Why should they have yeah. to wait until we're open yeah. and ring us? That's I think it's right. where the, the, the processes are all there now. People booking a taxi, whatever. Their digital marketing means already. We're not here to try and drag people back to engage with us like councils would have done 20 years ago. We're not trying to drag them back to a golden age on our time in our systems. We're actually trying to leapfrog our way to be in front of where they're going to go next. Right. We're not quite, we're getting there with the AI and other things. The people are expecting to be able to just go um, and call it almost, you know, from the ether. And so we need consistent, coherent, clear, simple ways of getting in front of the customer literally in front of their experience that they've yet to have, not the one we're hoping right. they had, which we didn't fulfill too late. Because once they've made up their mind, then they go somewhere where that's better fulfilled. And mm -hmm. even councils can lose customers because you can lose the emotional trust yeah. as well as literally the transaction. Yeah. So the my account's great because people have got it all in one place, but then that's the standard council stuff. It's the bit that have yet to have fulfilled right. that, that these mm -hmm. digital platforms will allow us to reach people where they are, when they are, and how they are, not where we're our systems, our departments, our opening times, yeah. and everything else. I mean, for me, it's about customer loyalty. Yes. So we're taking the things that they do today and the trust, but actually that's not enough. And what, yeah. we're, what we're trying to do is build that customer loyalty. So actually they come to us first. Yes, yeah, for anything they want in their life for which yeah. we could help them with a solution. Because the commercial offer 
It's not about us having a warehouse full of things that we will come and give you that we've already bought. We're providing a digital platform on which that customer can get fulfilled. We have that relationship with them and we'll arrange that thing from the private sector because we're not making the thing they want. We're not sending them on a holiday to Tenerife for getting their child, you know, learning advanced motorbike skills. But we will make sure that that person, if they want to do it in the home and they're a, a customer of ours, we will make sure that happens. If there are enough of them, we'll fulfill them. Fantastic. So it's basically the thinnest sliver of digital mm -hmm. interface between the customer and what they want to do and who's going to provide the, yeah. who's literally going to walk up the front path or be in the shop when they want to go sure. there. We're, we're not trying to create the shop or the path which create the means to get that. Right. And that is the cool bit. One of the, the other things you basically just touched on it, uh, just during the Black Friday sale thing, Amazon tempted me and I ended up buying a, an Amazon Echo and also an Echo yeah. Dot. So mm -hmm. I'm now talking to Alexa all over yeah. my house and you guys are doing something Pretty cool, but yes. it's already really happening. Yeah. We are. Do you want to tell us about that? Um, yes. So um, yes. So Alexa is available in the UK. Um, more people are buying it already. Um, we're looking. We're working at the moment with our partner Arcus Global to um, use Alexa to access council services directly. So we right. already have a working prototype that enables, um, in effect, Alexa to read the information that we have and to actually connect through to the services that we have. So um, one of the common questions we get asked all the time. Uh, is the what's my bin day? Yeah, um, it, it knows who you are, where you live, um, so it can just tell you. It's um, already doing it, isn't it? We saw a demo wow. of this happening where, and the demo was somebody saying, uh, Hey Alexa, when's my bin day? Says, You're as regarded as council, your bin day is this. I think they experimented that the bin's been stolen, or I've missed it, or I've lost mm -hmm. it, and it automatically says, I've ordered a new one, and yeah. this person doesn't have to go through the internet mm -hmm. to find that out. That's mm -hmm. happened for them. We're one of the first pioneers in this globally because Amazon want people to try and create new avenues for this in people's homes because it, it broadens their market but also if you can it can help someone stay well and safe at home order more prescriptions or it can actually do more transaction and what we want to do is break through the web constraint mm -hmm. to only just do what our website gives them to actually link to other payment engines or other means to fulfill you through the Alexa interface. So you could say, you know, I, I need to book a, a GP appointment and it will know it can run off and do that or I, I can pay for something in yeah. advance like theatre tickets fulfilled by us or by our partners. So we're going to need to do some development work, which is all good with Amazon um, in America and Salesforce in America and here to see how we can break through the limitations that the commercial Alexa product has today but yeah. won't have it tomorrow because they want us to experiment right. on our time and our resources because then Amazon can then broaden their scope and we've met the, the right people through our connection with Arcus and our connection with Salesforce that have spent a lot of time here because they can see we're pioneering their platform. Arcus are doing great technical work and Amazon get the reach that they're looking for which they're, they're an, enabling us to do. And what's exciting about that is we are actually doing it. That, that's what I find exciting. That mm -hmm. We're not just talking about this yeah. and saying we're potentially going to be doing it. We've already seen the demo yeah. of Teleship Indate. And I was in the meeting and sat next to somebody from the uh, marketing team and, th and they started telling me that they're already uh, redeveloping the website so that it can handle the, the request through yeah. AI. AI. Yeah. So, you know, so they're already doing this. So, you know, and then eventually you'd start having yeah. questions mm -hmm. about do you even need the website? Well, it's going to change, it's going to yeah. change yeah. the websites and things like that because at the moment, if you normally navigate down to a hierarchy, yeah. you won't need to do that. You can go straight to the information. Yeah. Yeah. I just thought it was so impressive so. that they just said that you were already doing that. Yeah, yeah. 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 you've won that already. And I mean, we didn't sort of tell Arcus to do that. They said, we're interested in that. That's what our specialism is. We'll bring it to the council because we've hosted all the other work they've done. We, and then we adopt that as a leading council to broadcast what we're doing, you know, like this video and other methods. Then everyone's a winner. Our partners sure. win because we're seen as breaking through some of those uh, thought processes for the rest of the industry. It's um, the one thing that I did want to ask you, and now that I've got the leader of the organisation mm -hmm. here, um, this, this move to commercial ABDC and this, this digital programme, mm -hmm. this, this must have involved a significant cultural shift in attitudes, behaviours. The biggest you could ever imagine, but one that 
I would like to say this, but I think with my team here, that when we worked with the staff over five or six years to explain the why of what we're doing, not just the what now, the way that just doing the same thing again would mean us failing in the, yeah. in the shortest term. You can see around the country where that's not just the local government sector and that we needed to do something different. And so when we devised our rather deeper plans, people I think bought into, look, it's scary and different, but it's something that gives us a, a chance to contribute. It's, it's positive, it's on the yeah. front foot with our union and staff co representatives. They felt it was, it was hopeful and it was positive, but it wasn't just salami slicing. And where councils now are only lately saying, oh, let's do something about it when it's half past oblivion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it does take time, which is why I, glib I didn't sort of glibly say, you know, we can help you. We can help people accelerate the time they haven't given themselves by giving them on a kind of consultancy basis to get them nearer to where they need to be before their financial situation hits them hard in the face. It may not change the way they do culture because you need good leadership, you need mentoring of people to do the right thing and have a sense of purpose and be able to communicate that to your staff in an authentic way and get staff to communicate to their staff. and build leaders across the whole organisation, which I think we've done with some aggression because, you know, I hope we, we have enabled people to be the best they can be at work and to um, nurture that. And you've got a very open culture. I mean, yeah. Adam, you'd agree. We don't, yeah. you, you know, if I'm walking around, no, people can stop me and talk about it and right. disagree or if they've got a better idea, we'll use it. But what we can't say is if we stay the same, expect to do the same thing tomorrow as we did today. As a lot of places are hoping it all just changed because someone cares about it that much. <laughs> yeah. And we've got rid of the begging bowl politics. You can't beg your way, you can't tax your way out of this because people feel they already pay too much. If you're a business, you can't scale one level of income. You've got, it's got to be a scalable income. And so commercialization with a social heart has got to be the way forward. And if people don't feel they're, if people get more out of what they want to do with their time, because most people have choices about their wallet. Some yeah. people who don't, we're here to help. But 99% of people probably spend their monthly income on things they want to see in their life. There's no reason why they can't spend it with us. Fantastic. I mean, I'll just add to the, the culture of ABDC, and I've, I've often been, you know, to say this, in that we are incredibly lucky. We weren't always in this place. You know, you go back five mm -hmm. years, but, but the resilience of the staff here, and I just think about what I, I've been doing in the enterprise service desk and, and the culture and the ability to accept change and just get on with things. Mm. We are very lucky and of course mm. it helps us certainly move on with the digital strategy. But yeah, we weren't always there. I, I can remember time when we weren't so good with change. But, but now across the organisation, you know, credit to the staff, how they do handle mm. change and, and their attitude towards it. Yeah. You know, that's what we need to do, just getting on with it. Okay. One of the things I would say, you, you've been moving at a rate of knots. It's been interesting to watch because you've been a customer of ours for a number of years and it's a very different organisation. Not That's only it. that, you've, you've actually had external recognition, several bits of external recognition. You, your, you and your team won the award for the SDI Best World Service Test yeah. with SDI. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, you've also had the IESE, IESE, IESE. IESE. Council of the Year, Council of the Year. Innovation and Improvement um, Social Enterprise, the Soccer Tim mm -hmm. Award this year. Yes. And a European Award for um, IT Excellence with yes. your customer experience and customer yes. management yes. program. Yes. yes. So, what tips would you okay. give to someone with, Giveaways. say, starting on a digital program? Just starting on, starting out from scratch. Um, I think for me it's about getting um, the right shared vision. So uh, if everybody's heading in different directions, I think it's very difficult. Um, so I think it's about working with the right group. We did a lot of work um, with, the, with the senior leadership team, understanding what that looks like. Yeah. So having that common uh, direction makes a big difference. I think mine would be back to my point about purpose of the organisation and customer, the customer, not citizen. It's about what they want to do with their lives, not what they have to do only. Yeah. And digital is a way of, as I say, bespoking their day. It's not about digital for the sake of it. That is the means that we all use. And in one day we won't have, you know, we won't be walking up the high street sure. looking at this. It will be somehow wearable or built in. But it's about them, it's liberating them to be able to make choices. And that sounds rather grand and about the glib, but it, it's hopefully their choices with us commercially. Of course. But they're all citizens of the district. We want them to have a great life, work well, be safe, bring their children up well, 
be good grandparents. It's, it's about place. But digital enables people to tailor the day they want to see right. that day before they've had it. Right. Yeah, and I think as well, something Marivon always says to me is, we need to be doing operating the same internally as what we're doing externally. And you know, what we're doing, mm. if we're providing our customers, our public, this digital experience, then we need to be thinking the same internally and be gearing ourselves up and working in that way. And then, of course, everybody who, who, who helps provide that strategy and support that is, is, is geared it's up. Already on board. Yeah, yeah, it's already on board. It's an alignment. Mm. That's yeah, good it's point. not, you know, this is how we support yeah. our public and how we work. Yeah. You can't work completely differently in the office. No, true. Well, I'd like to thank you all very, very much. You. Uh, you, you've done amazing. There's some amazing results over the last little while. And uh, long may it continue. Thank you very much. So we'll be back to talk to you on another topic soon. Mm, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.